Hello once again. We are at a point where I have removed the toroid memory unit from the back of the uh, mechanism. Now these little tabs you see here, top and bottom, all the way down, little buttons, they ride on, on these things right here. These, these little things go up and down, if you'll recall. These are brand new ones that I bought and installed. And these two center ones here, uh, they run down the, the middle here. And as you can see, it's pretty darn worn out. It's worn all the way through. Now, I read an article quite a while ago that said, you know, uh, I just kind of skimmed through the article. It said, you know, if this is worn down, you got a problem and the world's going to come to an end and all that sort of thing. I just kind of ignored it because I, I, was not, I was not at the point where I had to worry about it. Well, I just got reminded by one of our good subscribers that, you know, of that article. I had almost, I guess I had all but forgotten the article. And it said, what happens is, this is, this is where your ground is formed. And these two apparently are the two ground types that ride that thing. They, these two outside ones ride the buttons. And the two inside ones riding right down the middle. And the plating has been worn off. And if that happens, you lose your good ground and you begin to get sparking. Now you can't see the sparking. It's very, very minor. But apparently what happens is when you lose that ground, uh, the record selection becomes erratic. It won't select at all, or selects the or, or selects uh, and the wrong record. It just sort of jumps around because it, it doesn't really know the toroids inside this thing are not getting the proper signal to send to the uh, to the tour mat or the pulse amplifier. The way I see it, down this line right here. Okay. So according to the article, there's a fix for it. What you need to do is reestablish a ground between this plate and the toroid chassis the Tormat chassis I'm sorry and they shut they tell you how to put a couple of you know you can take a couple of soldering tabs loosen these screws not too much loosen these screws put a couple of soldering tabs under there you know sort of sort of a, a hooked soldering tab you know where you can like if the soldering tab has two circles like that what you would do is you know cut out one side so it looks like this and you can just just raise the screw high enough to slip it underneath there you know then you put one here and one here you bring them together in the center so these two holes would overlap so you'd have essentially like that with this overlapped right here the two of them and then you hook a you solder a, a wire to the center now these two would be tightened the screws would be tightened back down on these right here it would actually be a hook like setup okay and then you run uh, a wire from there to a one amp uh, slow blow fuse and then the other side of the slow blow fuse gets hooked to the chassis over here to some point where you get a good ground and that should reestablish your ground and prevent your sparking and prevent your erratic uh, record selection and all sorts of things well you know I'm at the point right yeah let's give it a shot I have nothing to lose right now and uh, at the same time Brendan's got me, uh, you know, rechecking our little uh, add subtract relay setup. He doesn't think that these uh, solenoids are going in as far as they should. He's kind of right. It is kind of floppy. This one up here is, they're both kind of floppy, actually. I don't know if they're supposed to be that loose or not, but you can see they kind of flop around a little. I don't know. I may have to look at that also. So it's just a couple of things. So that what I'm going to do is I'm going to, rather than go through all the soldering and all that crap and everything, temporarily I'm just going to loosen the screw right here. And the article recommended that you use 20 gauge wire, you know, 18 to 20 or something like that. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take 22 gauge wire. It's 600 volts. <laughs> it can handle it. And uh, I'm going to just loosen this screw. I'm going to tin one end of the wire. I'm going to wrap it around, tighten that screw up. If you unloosen that screw too far, Apparently there's a uh, one of those quick nut type things on the inside. It'll fall down inside the uh, toroid mechanism. So you don't want to unloosen it too far. You're going to be stuck taking the whole plate off. And the way the article reads, it says you don't want to have to do that. <laughs> all right, I'm a believer already, all right? So what we're going to do is go ahead and wrap a wire around it. It'll be thin enough that I don't have to remove the screw too far. Tighten it up tight. Ground it to this. And we're going to give this whole thing another shot. So let me get that wire connected. 
since this is only a test situation I've decided to go ahead and just use solid wire it'll be a whole lot easier to bend and, and install I don't have to worry about t overly tinning it and everything anyway and then the screw I've loosened up and I'm taking some good alcohol here a good old 91% giving it a very good scrub now these are the two let me get my pencil here if I can find it can't even here it is there it is these are the two screws in the article that the guy who wrote the article uh, he said it's a very simple fix to this. He said yeah, he put one tab here, one tab here. Remember, he just used a hook. Uh, he, he cut the loop so there's a hook there and a hook here where he can just loosen up these screws just a little bit, hook them around the screws, tighten it back up, and have the two loops in the center that are left over from the opposite end of each tab s together right here and then run the wire through. The object here is to keep the wire flat enough you know, when, when this thing, when this thing here comes riding on down, it's riding these uh, little tad, these little buttons here. You don't want it to get down at this end right here and run into that wire. So that wire, and with the tabs, has to be flat enough between these screw heads that this thing here will not. When these two, these two things right here come riding down the center here, you know, they don't run into anything, and that so it would be run probably out like this or down like this real close to the screw head and that's what we're going to try to do so let me go ahead and get that and then the other end I'll just find an, I'll find a good ground spot on the, on the tour mat well that's done I don't think there'll be any uh, problem with clearance on that shouldn't hit it at all and I tighten the screw back down remember don't if you ever decide to do this do not remove that screw too far because that nut falls down inside you got a real problem on your hands okay <laughs> Rather than put the other end of the wire, you know, strip it and put it underneath a screw head somewhere on the chassis, I decided to just go ahead and tack solder it right here to this established ground. That should work a whole lot better. All right, I think that's going to do it. Nice and solid, temporary, but it'll still do the job. All right, she's plugged in. Hopefully we'll get something better with this. I'd like to see at least a slight improvement about what's going on. Fire in the hole. Well, automatically she took off. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> Let's see what happens. All right, that's cool. We'll let her warm up. We're about ready to rock and roll here. Now, if this does not work or improve at least at all, you know, it just does exactly the same thing. Uh, now our next target is right here. So let's put some money in this machine. Are we ready? Let's do that. Let me make sure this wire is down in there. Yep, it is. Okay, here we go. Money in the machine. Light lights up. Let's make our selection. And hopefully something will happen. Whoa. Ho, 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 ho. What's going on here? Ah, oh, the record. It's not going far enough to pick up the record. My bad. I'm going to have to fix that. Well, we're making some progress. Uh, I have a record in F1 right here, F1. And this thing scanned on down and it stopped at the slot just before it, which is e, E9 right here. I think that's E9. Let me, let me get this thing lit up so I can see better here. Yes, E9, it stopped right there. And the record is in the next slot right here, see it? So, what we need to do, since we took this thing all off and messed around with it and everything, in the book is an alignment procedure to align this thing to where it'll, you know, you have to take it all the way at the end and align it with this end, and I think you have to go back to the other end, and this, you have to align it with the ones at the end, I think. I only skimmed through it for a while to see what would happen, but guess what? She's now, when you, when you press the keys on the keyboard, this thing is taking off but it's still having a little difficulty getting exactly where it needs to go. So let me work on that for a while. By the way, I can see already that this ground is gonna to have to be made permanent. I'm gonna to have to come up with a couple of tabs. I don't have any tabs. Where can I get a couple of tabs, guys? You know, this is about the only thing I can do and those holes are not gonna be big enough. That's the only thing I got, I can't believe it. I went through all my stash. You'd think I'd be able to come up with some tabs. 
One more thing before we go any further. In the last video, I showed you where Bobby uh, made those brass, that brass fitting for me, so I, or bushing for me, so I could get these things up in the air. I kept calling his uh, his YouTube handle Bobby Tech Abyss. It's not really Tech Abyss. It's Bobby Tectal Abyss. I don't know how I kept mispronunciate. Just chalk that up to old age, Bobby. Sorry. It's Bobby Tectal Abyss. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think one of our primary problems, or the primary problem, is that, that transfer arm that picks up the record and brings it on up and puts it on the uh, turntable platter. I think it may not be, it may be stuck down there. It may not be perfectly aligned with the slot the way it's supposed to be aligned, and there is a procedure for that, that to get that aligned. What's happening is once, once this thing goes scanning down and finds the record, which it is now, it's just a little bit off, and I think that arm is that arm is hitting down here in the bottom somewhere where it's not perfectly lined, because this lever right here will pop up once it gets where it's going. It'll pop up and then stay there. When in fact it's supposed to pop up and then go back down. I think as the transfer arm comes up, it pulls this uh, trip lever switch down and then raises this one up. Which makes contact with all, you know, makes contact with the bottom here and shoves all these contacts together like that. But all it's doing right now is popping up and staying. I don't know, all you smart guys, you know, I'm pretty sure that's the way it's supposed to work. I think that this trip lever is tied back in there in the cam directly to that transfer arm. Well, anyway, that's it for now, guys. I'm going to make this not so long. You know, again, these are going to be a series of little short videos until we actually figure out what's going on. Uh, I will be going through the alignment procedure, reading all about how to align not only the, uh, the, uh, the mechanism on the track, so it lines up with this, these record slots, but I'm also going to read the alignment procedure for the transfer arm that picks up that record and brings it on up here like that and puts it back in here where the platter is. So I'm going to get real learned on how to do that. It's it's a mechanical alignment. Those are the kinds of alignments I don't mind doing, okay? All right. <laughs> we'll just cut it off here. Until next time, this is John.